citizenship as a concept in school? I don't remember too much from what we learned about in Ghana. Right. But then uh, I do know, yeah, I don't, yeah, this is this, uh, this in Canada school too. I don't remember too much knowledge on what we learned about citizenship, but like from my, uh, nah, I won't even try. Mm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember to be, no, yeah. I don't remember. It doesn't, obviously, it doesn't jump remember. out. Yeah. Yeah. And so where did you develop the ideas you have about citizenship, would you say? Well, uh, I guess I developed it, uh, I guess, as time goes by and then you start to see the injustices of an individual's face, and it's like, and this is all in all, just even whether it's me looking at the experience of Ghana and like just the, the, the divide, even kind of everywhere you go to this whole divide and um, gender or class yeah. or, or um, income bracket, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. It's just like, if we are all citizens, why aren't we basically, you know, I mean, why not? Yeah, we should all not all be at the same position in life, but we should. There shouldn't be such a huge divide, and uh, yeah, there shouldn't be such a huge divide in society. And so, you know what I mean? But yeah, there yeah. shouldn't be that type of divide present. Yeah, for sure, no. Yeah, and just the fact that some people are deemed. Uh, and when I think of citizenship too, it's like. I, I, what comes to mind is like, it's the word, like, as like, I'm a citizen of Canada, I'm a citizen of Canada, I get, to, uh, I get to experience the full rights and privileges and whatever, whatever, uh, owed to me, but then at the same time, too, it's, as I said before, it, it, it depends, so it's like in a, in a black person's case, an indigenous person's case, uh, yeah, and then I guess that whole idea of citizenship too, like, most people, like, I think First Nations people, I've heard that that story on them, like, if they were supposed to apply, apply for citizenship, but just that whole uh, history on that part too, um, that one part I don't know too much about, mm-hmm. but I guess the whole part in itself is like, what is, like, citizenship, what does that even truly mean, and, like, mm-hmm. in, the, in, that, in the context of, uh, uh, at the like, indigenous uh, First Nation history and like just, like different aspects to go about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, this links to my next question, which is, do you feel as if you are a citizen in in your country in Canada, and what does that feel like? Do I feel like I'm a citizen in Canada? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, from uh, I, I won't look at this from an individual perspective, but like, I mean, obviously individually. I would say, if I was to rank and scale one to ten, I'd say yeah. seven out of ten. I do just feel like I'm a citizen, but at the same time too, it depends on the time, occasion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, because I'll never like I'll, I'll use like the example of as like yeah, the whole black um black lives matter example or right? indigenous peoples and how look at their look at their living conditions and the fact and all the problems that exist. It's like if we are all citizens, why are we not being treated, going back to the whole democracy of like equally or equitably with not, mm-hmm. why is there such a divide in how we treat people when we're all all the same rights mm-hmm. and privileges mm-hmm. as, mm-hmm. as anyone. So it's like, do I personally feel like as a black person, because that is why, yeah, that's why I got, got to remember like, who you are as a person, as a black male, young, and living in, in Toronto, do I feel like as a citizen? I'd say, oh, for sure, no, the answer would be no, because looking at the, the whether it's the, the, when we talk about, looking at, yeah, just looking at how our society all in all is against, I guess, people who look like me or like my race all in all, it's like, it's, it's like, uh, the words I did, but I'm just trying to like figure out like, it's, it's just so, it's like I will never forget the day, for example, I left City Hall to go to my research because I was also a co-researcher with the University of Toronto and mm. Indigenous professor. Mm. And it's so like I, I was going there for a meeting and then I saw a police officer and I wanted to ask him a question. I always wanted to ask someone, a police officer, uh, this question, mm-hmm. but I just never had the time to. But I saw him. I gave him like a one meter distance. Like I was, I was social distancing already before mm-hmm. during that time. Mm-hmm. And then I, I called him out. Like I was like, officer, officer, like get his attention. And then he turned around 
immediately turn around, put his gun, up, his hand on his hook gun, and he, he yeah, yeah, he put his hand on his gun and stepped back. Mm. And I was just like shocked. I'm just like, whoa! In my yeah. head, I was like, whoa, what's going? On? Why, why so quick? And, so, and especially because it was it was daylight. Mm-hmm. It was right outside, like a you know government building. The, the courthouse is all around us. The police officers like almost every day moving around and that day specifically there were like four other police officers around mm-hmm. it's like looking at the environment at that second that those like seconds leading up to it and after it there was no reason for anyone to feel unsafe like that was probably yeah. the safest time ever but then yeah then he was he did that i moved he moved back while i was talking to him mm-hmm. I, I just immediately my instinct was move my hand out of my pocket, which is not something black people should do because yeah. I didn't know why. It was cold even. It was even cold that day too. It was like, why do I have to make you feel comfortable? So, but then I did do that. But then I'm like, no, I put it back in. And I walked up in front of him while he moved back. I'm like, I, I, put, I, went, I went up and then, you know, I'm just like, I, you know, I asked my question in the middle of the conversation. It's like, oh, my bad if I scared you or whatever. He had a bad face after I said mm. that. Because it's like, I did, it's clear I scared you. Yeah. I don't know. So like just looking at citizenship and status, and uh, I mean we can we can talk about migrant status and migrant workers and all that whole discussion. But like if that was a white person in that situation, 100% they wouldn't the uh, totally they wouldn't have reacted like that. So just like I feel like we're gonna talk about citizenship and our legal rights. Because we have legal rights, we have um oh I swear I learned this. We have we have legal rights. We have what other rights? Uh, social, social rights. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like we have all these rights, uh, mm-hmm. like uh, old school, but mm-hmm. but like it's it's not really given to us sadly. Given yeah. to us select certain like select collectively people sadly. Yeah. 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 And it's hard to say. Yeah, it's selective. It's it's by like choosy choosy. Like you pick and choose yeah. who we want to. Uh, uh, you know, a cardin for example, is not. It's 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 well, it's legal. It's illegal. Uh, it's is illegal to do that. It's all in all, it, like we talk about human rights, that's not what's what's like what should be happening at all. But then it is happening. Like indigenous people, their human rights are being invaded just by going to one of their homes in their yeah. rural community with not. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um. Oh, so this is a question you've kind of already answered, but I want to give you a chance to elaborate. Um, which is, do you feel as if you're seen as a citizen in your country by others? Um, and some of the others I list are by politicians, by the general public, by the media, I might add, by police, uh, and why or why not? So the broad question is, do you feel as if you're seen as a, a citizen in Canada by others? I'll start with the media and say for sure no, mm. because um, just I'm like just how the media has a way of making uh, Malcolm X even said it or make the victim seem as a criminal and the criminal seem as a victim mm-hmm. and just seeing that um, currently in the uh, Ahmed Arbery case uh, than uh, in the states because yeah. recently I started seeing some news people some like, some crazy stuff and yeah. it's like and you see that constantly and doesn't even even in the news when a black person is a victim whether despite anything the the picture even the news people want to portray is like a you, you look like a anyone would say oh okay this person looks like a headlam is up to trouble yeah. but then look at that what happened in Nova Scotia yeah and the news the news and they had the audacity to talk about Oh, this guy had had a passion to become a dentist. Why do I care that he wants to be a dentist? Yeah. You see, like that's just so crazy, and you see the difference in how. Uh, and that's when I said this on the side, I'm just like I'm not surprised because they always want to make the like, white perpetrator. Um, they want to humanize that person. Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. that black person, they want to criminalize yeah. that person. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, that's media, politicians, I mean, you have all of them, they do the talk, 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 but it's like, are they, when it comes to actually uh, taking action and doing something, you don't see that, looking at our friend Trudeau, for example, him, it just, yeah, just thinking of all, all politicians and from all levels of government, especially when it comes, in terms of the indigenous aspect, they all have a lot of talk, and 
do is, but when it comes to actually doing stuff that they can do quickly right now, mm-hmm. that's when it just comes like, oh, that's when they can't do it, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So, um, what do we call it? So, I'm just, I was, um, so politicians, general public, yeah, yeah, pu- public, no, you have white, uh, white people in rural areas calling black people live in rural areas, the N-word, yeah. I know one young black girl in the school, she was, she was beat, is all I tell in global news, last year she was beat bad by a bunch of white girls, they were calling her N-word, she had moved from Toronto to, um, uh, uh, one of the, uh, one of the, no, I won't say no name parts of the, the province, but one of the rural parts of the province, like, where, you, yeah, it's not the main, not major city at all, and her name is, uh, Oh, I'm so keen on remembering people's names. I have too much of a mind. Yeah, so it's like, it's, it's just a shame that we are, in terms of like the general public in general, or uh, yeah, in media, politics, in the classroom, in all of our institutions, certain people aren't seen, black people, indigenous people, AFS people. Uh, and can even go, let's not talk about, let's not, not, let's not talk about, let's talk about women. Let's talk about, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, even those, uh, let's talk about religion and Muslims and, yeah, we can, just, we can go about it. This is like, so we all intersectional beings, so we can go about it in so many ways. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you feel as if your views and perspectives are represented through official channels, like in politics and media? Like oh my views. Your like, views, like, like yeah. yeah, your priorities, your. I would oh <laughs> no 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 no, I would say like it's it's yes like I mean it's always tokenism that's taking place in our institutions and like and by our uh, by people it's just like oh I've done this so let me check it out but it's like there's so much more to do mm-hmm. that's not being done mm-hmm. and it's like. And it's just like, am I, am I, because it's like, the question, do you feel as if your views and perspectives are represented? My views and perspectives can be represented, represented <laughs> if they aren't even understood. Mm, mm-hmm. And you can tell that clearly they're not understood by people are like really stuck in their ways. Right. And all the and that's why I'm so keen on educating people at such a young age as we need to have black indigenous history and curriculum in, in there because yo, know, I mean uh yeah, 'cause like that's it's, it's bre- our education system is breeding ignorant individuals and that's not gonna help anyone. So yeah, I do not feel like we're represented in politics, mm-hmm. uh uh like views and perspectives. No no no. It's like you can you, you can, no, like you can have you can line up people who ancestors were enslaved or part of, or, or people who were took who were part of the residential school system, and like you can bring them into a bring them into a politician, have a discussion, or whatever. But the, the most politicians will leave there, still not changing their mind, you know. Like and most people, like oh, we need evidence. We need and even mm-hmm. when it's evidence based research mm-hmm. that has mm-hmm. been conducted, mm-hmm. that still doesn't uh, get to people. You have a man like Doug Ford saying need to arrest people to solve gun violence problem, but our evidence shows we need to invest in social housing, communities, uh, in, 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 in more education, uh, programming, et cetera, et cetera. So it's like, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's not understood, it's not welcome mm-hmm. uh, to official channels, like, no, 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 it's, 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 it's yeah, just, it, we have the United Nations decade. The right now we're cutting the United Nations decade for people of African descent. Mm-hmm. And that's been recognized by all levels of government. Mm-hmm. But then, okay, it's been recognized. And so what? What yeah. after? What are you we really going to do? So it's like, don't they, they'll, they'll, they'll check it off the list and they'll, they'll hear it. But it's like, are you hearing to listen? Mm-hmm. Understand? Are you just hearing to, I don't know. It's just a shame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, did did you vote in the last election? Oh yeah. Yes. I'm glad I was I was able to. I wanted to vote in the provincial one, but I I yeah I was able to vote in the uh, federal election. Okay. 
um, why? Why did you vote? Oh, why did I vote? Yeah. Oh, I, well, I, well, I, I was always going to cat, tell people, my friends, I went, go vote, go vote, et cetera, et cetera. It's so like, one, it would be uh, kind of hypocritical of me. But all in all, I was so excited to vote. I was, I mean, after, actually, while well, I was there voting, the experience didn't seem as how I expected it to be. Mm-hmm. But it, all in all, it was still good knowing that I was given the opportunity, whether the vote didn't do special, I lose my vote, even counts, et cetera, et cetera. But why did I vote? One, because I guess there's civic responsibility. And uh, and because every vote counts, I do believe in that. Every vote does truly count. Mm-hmm. In some areas, it gets close, mm-hmm. neck and neck. Mm-hmm. So, like, I do know the importance of voting, and all in all, just even if the person I don't vote for, the party, I would say, like, there, for example, anything didn't win, but then just looking at by the data and uh, whatever we can get from the elections, we can see that, okay, a bunch of young people voted for the NDP, da, da, da. so, like, I, I do know it will help influence and it'll help motivate other people, so that's, yeah, mm-hmm. very important. Uh... So I'm going to guess you intend to keep on voting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's important. Um, Are there any barriers for you to vote? Do you feel like... Barriers? Barriers. No, I mean, no. For for, 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 for the voting station, like, just in my lobby, like, like one of the rooms in my... (laughs) That's the most convenient effort. But that comes to, like... Yeah, yeah, that's, for me personally, no, but then I do obviously know that other people do have barriers, whether it's some, um, uh, uh, I mean, I guess every site, well, not every, most sites are accessible by, you know, real wheelchair and things of that sort. Yeah. But like, I do know there are barriers that exist 100%. Yeah, okay, but not for me, that's good. Um, what would you say are the three most important issues that you think the government ought to be dealing with right now? And I have to say this, see this one I was really thinking. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, I mean, I know, okay, obviously 100%, we need to be working on reconciliation. Mm-hmm. That's 100%. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, another issue I'd say. I, I mean, I guess the question is which level of government, but mm-hmm. sure reconciliation would expand to all levels of government I feel need to be working on it mm-hmm. but another thing I feel the government should be working on is to um issues 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 she's like I mean it's easy to I mean it's like I mean I, think, I mean every ministerial role is an issue whether it's climate change whether it's housing immigration whatever but I feel like Feel like, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, uh, for the, I'll go back to the, for the indigenous one. Mm-hmm. I'll say indigenous, and I'll, and I'll also say, um, I, I'll, I'll add a, a, the whole. Uh, we need reconciliation. People even said we need reconciliation when it comes to the black community as well. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'd say reconciliation for our. Uh, historically uh, uh, oppressed individuals, mm-hmm. that's key. Mm-hmm. And um, the three issues that our government ought to be doing with right now. I, I mean, if I'm talking about eventually, I'll say education mm-hmm. because, uh, and, and just like just looking at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report, education was that, but it's part of that report too. And just like looking at the stuff, education was part of housing, was part. So I would probably say education, housing, like. I mean, no, I won't say housing yet, but I'll for sure say education as my second point mm-hmm. because, yeah, like I, I stand from that we need to, um, uh, uh, yeah, address the, uh, whether it's the, yeah, we talk about achievement gaps between black and white people, mm-hmm. uh, students, and it's all these other issues, but like we all in all, we need to address the fact that students, the education they're learning, it's not what they need to be learning. Mm-hmm. It's just failing. The system is really failing individuals, mm-hmm. and it's it's more of a, a prison. Type. It's it's, it's okay. It's it's arguably can be compared to a prison and how it silences people. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. I think experience hearing some of the stories I've heard from people, mm-hmm. it can, can be compared to a prison. So I'd say yeah, the reconciliation aspect, the education aspect. 
and another issue. Well, now well, first ask for those people that do I think they are on the government. The government is doing really right now. Hundred mm-hmm. percent, the government's not doing a reconciliation. Mm-hmm. No, no. I was just talking about it with my friend right now. Like when we have a when we have Canada, who the chief, the Ontario chief medical officer had the audacity to say that <laughs> when asked why don't we collect race based data and healthcare. He's like, oh, we don't, we don't recognize color, or we don't look at that. It's like, what? How? That's the most. Like, you can't. There's not. It's not enough to not be racist. Yeah. To be anti-racist. And it's like, we, we, you can't say you don't recognize color in 2020 because that's all it's about. Yeah. So like, even if you have a man like Donald Trump who even has said he reckon Donald Trump even recognized and said in his press conferences many times that, oh yeah, we recognize that. Now, obviously, Donald Trump is who I don't. Yeah, that's. But the fact he was able to recognize it in itself mm. is something to be applauded. It's like he even said, "Yeah, we recognize that our uh, you know, is black communities that are gonna be more affected." Mm. That's when he talks about lies about what they're doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but mm-hmm. like, so like I feel like Canada, we really need to work on our reconciliation and part. Mm-hmm. Indigenous communities are suffering. Uh, black communities, those bit more. More high high rates of poverty, unemployment. That's the where we're seeing things like COVID, like uh, take take keep and to end. Like just looking at who are in our profession, those PSWs and in these long term care homes. It's majority women and it is majority racial as women too mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So it's like we gotta really open up our eyes for that. But like yeah, I don't think the government is dealing with the indigenous mm-hmm. pie. But just a couple of months ago in January, there was these real blockades. Mm-hmm. Uh, like it's, it's not, mm-hmm. they're not doing anything, mm-hmm. and that's that's very, like what that um most of everything that come out. Yeah, the government needs to really do that because I feel like there can be no, um, we can't be can we can never go forward as a country. I don't feel like Canada has the has that they should even have the courage to be a even to try to go talk about another country yet yeah, their own track record sucks mm-hmm. you can't go talk about china when you know you have mm-hmm. crap in your back ride mm-hmm. that needs to be fixed mm-hmm. and it's like obviously no one's talking about perfection but it's one no one's saying no one's saying to be perfect but it's like actually make an uh uh actually make a effort a true and genuine effort to stop conducting all these reports mm-hmm. recommendations all but to be tossed under the rug mm-hmm. that's one thing i'm and that's what i said as my was education i mean i'm not going to do no research conduct no uh survey no 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 i don't need that because we, we we've been conducting research mm-hmm. we're mm-hmm. tired of being asked the same questions mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, of like ex- we're tired of being vulnerable every time and mm-hmm. like talking about experiences just for it to be pushed away and so like yeah they're not doing enough about that now in terms of education mm-hmm. yeah I think mm-hmm. we were just like that's key to solve it. And education I said this in my speech I think before I got time that education is the well and I don't even remember my own speech <laughs> but education is like the, the the framework and like it, it does determine where you end up in the future. Obviously, I'm not saying, and I'm, I'm not even talking about post-secondary education, mm-hmm. like but basic uh, elementary high school education. Mm-hmm. That's so key, and it's not just about oh, getting a getting a diploma. It's about what did you actually learn mm-hmm. in, in your what 12, 13 years of life of high school. Mm-hmm. That's so important. Mm-hmm. I mean, high school or in elementary school or whatever. Mm-hmm. So education, I feel, is key to solving uh, or getting a a better, uh, um, better result in our uh, other issues such as you know like not seeing enough black doctors mm-hmm. or black people in certain professions or indigenous uh, professors or uh, not yeah racialized people etc. So I feel like that's gonna help us. Mm-hmm. And the third thing, hmm. if anything, I'd say for the third thing that the uh, issue that uh, we need to tackle is hmm, it's a hard one <laughs> i don't know i mean right. i guess there's so many issues but i yeah. would say let's just say housing to be honest because we see uh gentrification happen in our communities mm-hmm. and we see that you have indigenous people and how they, they house precarious housing mm-hmm. uh, and talk about precarious employment like mm-hmm. we just need to deal with all these the precarious like uh situations that and how society puts 
these people into precarious situations. Like I feel like even all in all, I would say equity in itself needs to be at the framework mm-hmm. of every single thing mm-hmm. that of every single issue mm-hmm. that we're trying to tackle. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, women's issues, intimate partner violence. We can go mm-hmm. on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wonderful. Um. Have you ever participated in public protests or demonstrations? And if yes, which ones? Well, not the ones I really, really wanted to go to be part of, but mm-hmm. like I've been a part of the climate march. Climate march, yep. Climate march. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what else? Uh, yeah, I think it was mostly. Yeah, it was just. Yeah, and I've been at this, this um, uh, Women's Day. Yeah, mm-hmm. Women's Day. I took part, I've been taking part in the last two years, I've yeah. been going to the Women's March. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that's, those are the, not, not really much of a protest, yeah. like, it's, it's a demonstration, but, like, that, those are really the only two things I can say are close to it. Yeah. Um, which are the ones, you said, not to the ones you would like to go to, which would those, yeah. which would those be? <laughs> like, when, uh, I mean... Uh, oh, obviously, I wouldn't want to go. I wouldn't want to go to this. Like, it's not like I want to. Like, when a black person gets shot, I'm not trying to go to one of those. I would rather not. But like, I haven't had a uh, the experience of being a part of one of it, one of those rallies and whatnot. But all in all, I'm all about being proactive and not reactive. So it's like and that's why we shouldn't have to wait for some another person to get beat by a police officer. Da 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 da. Before we say, you know what? Let's rally, let's protest, let's yeah. do so and so. So, yeah, so that's something I, yeah, that's something I'm even, even looking at it myself too. But that's something I, I'm interested in and partaking in. Because I feel like there's a uh, huge power, and not only I am, I'm all, uh, huge power in solidarity as well. Mm-hmm. That's so key. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Can I ask, um, I know like the word itself activist can uh, be quite loaded and mean different things to different people is it is it a word you uh would use for yourself or do you choose different terms yeah when people call me that word i don't i, I don't vibe with it as much i, I always laugh when i hear that word honestly i feel i i feel like the work i'm doing whether it can be defined under activism I see it as just, I mean, from a Christian perspective, I can say doing the work of God. Mm-hmm. And, like, from a society perspective, societal perspective, I can say you're doing the work of humanity, to be honest, mm-hmm. because, mm-hmm. you know, we shouldn't have to, uh, yeah, that's what I'd say, yeah, like, uh, I wouldn't, I would act, I mean, I don't mind the word, mm-hmm. but usually when you hear activists, I mean, most of I mean, well, most of these politicians like to claim that they were activists, and so, as I mean, well, you know, maybe they were like activists, whether it's for food and security, whatever issue it may be. But I, I it's like, I feel like it's just more than, it, it's just more than the word. Like people just want to draw around the word. I'm an activist. I'm oh, I saw oh, my Lord. Oh, that 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 thing bothers me. That stuff bothers me. I feel like that word is being overused. Mm-hmm. And people just love the title. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm not in it bad, I don't want no one calling me no activist. Mm-hmm. I don't want that to be my title. Most likely, like no, it's just like I am an advocate. I'm, I'm the work I'm doing is advocacy. Mm-hmm. But like, don't call me an activist. Mm-hmm. Call me if if anything, call me a uh, uh, <laughs> what's the word? Call me a call me a. Hmm, I'll get back to that. But yeah, it's like it's. it's <laughs> It's, yeah, that's why I said it first. It's just um, doing the work of humanity and doing the work of God, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, last two kind of subject questions. Um, do you feel like you are a political person? And what does that mean to you? Do I feel like I'm a political person? A person, uh, yeah, oh yeah. I mean, inv- I, I, I'm involved politically, and I'm like, what well, I think there's something called like being politically woke, or like just some woke when it comes to politics. I'd say, mm-hmm. um, what we call it, um, you feel like a political person? Does that mean to? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, like, I know whenever like issues or like politics, or whatever, my friends always come to ask me as if I'm like, like this whole uh, um funding and grants that Trudeau's been doing. Mm. It's like as if I'm working with Trudeau, my friends keep asking me mm-hmm. what all the details, even though I do know the details about about it. Mm-hmm. But it's like, so like, I mean, that's just going but to like, I guess the, to, what does it mean to be a political person is to be aware of your uh. To be aware of. Ooh, okay. And before I even ask that, my skin color is politics. Like mm-hmm. my 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 race is yeah. My 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 gender is politics. My religion can also be politics. Like I, I think we are all political people. Mm-hmm. We're all political people. It's just a matter of understanding where you lie on the political spectrum mm-hmm. is important. Mm-hmm. And, and uh yeah. Hundred okay. percent, and like, well, I guess, what does it mean to be a political person? Just someone who's aware of the 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 status politically in society, and uh, a political person is someone who's uh, yeah, it's, I guess, understands and is, uh, how their government is 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 the current state of their government and the the history of the government and how the government's government and its institutions are being run. That's very, uh, I'd say, if that qualifies, or that's a brief definition of a political person. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And last question is, is, do you feel as if you contribute to your community, and what does that mean to you? Oh, yeah, that one I, I do, I'd say humbly, I do feel like I, I contribute to my community. <laughs> and whether it's with my volunteerism or whether it's with um what do we call it <clears throat> whether it's yeah whether it's my volunteers volunteerism whether it's my with my uh, constant advocacy or um whether it's um just being present I feel like that's something that people lack is being present mm-hmm. and uh like yeah with all the communities that the community that I volunteer in my community like that is in itself is a contribution mm-hmm. just volunteering at west park in itself mm-hmm. is a contribution mm-hmm. and for me, contributing to my community is 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 like just recognizing the issues that this community uh, faces and experiences the people, and then recognizing the, uh, what the people who are Western uh, face on a daily. Mm-hmm. So like, and to understand how I can do my part to make their experiences and make their current situations better. Because at the end of the day, I feel like if you want as a as a politician. Or as a person, if your interest isn't to make things better mm-hmm. and to change things that need to be changed and fixed, then are you really truly contributing to your community mm-hmm. if you aren't constantly interested in the invested interest of your community as a whole? Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, I mean that can be taken in two different in, in two different ways. Because let's say I live in a in a rich in Bridal Path in a rich area mm-hmm. uh, where Drake and all of them are. It's mm-hmm. like, I mean, I mean, if if I use a definition, I just gave like the interest of people in my community. And that's when you can be talking about greed, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's important to when think about how you can contribute to the community. Also think about how it relates to and how there's connections with other communities and how it relates and can affect another community mm-hmm. and you just got to be aware and mm-hmm. conscious that's mm-hmm. one thing people need to be aware mm-hmm. is, is to be as aware and conscious and not thinking so mm-hmm. close-minded because yeah. at the end of the day that has i am sure that i'm uh, close-mindedness i'm sure has caused many of our it has it, led us to where we are today to be honest mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. how how would you define or or like who uh, the question is something like who counts as your community or or what or where because like, the question is quite abstract um when you say you are contributing to your community who is it that you're contributing to how do you understand mm-hmm. your community well when i'm contributing to my community i see it as i'm who specifically i'd say I'm contributing to the mothers who single mothers in our area. Mm-hmm. I'm contributing to the uh, the small business owners in our area. Mm-hmm. I'm contributing to 
the youth in our community mm -hmm. i'm contributing to uh i'm contributing to yeah like and uh, specifically name those people because it's like those are most of the people i've interacted with mm -hmm. in these in this community and mm -hmm. those are the most of the people those are the majority of the people who are uh if who i would we call it experience the issues that i face in this community and other communities as a whole so yeah okay. those would be the ones i'm contributing to yeah and it's geographic right? yeah like yeah, it's, it's sort of specific to the area uh the eglinton and yeah the york yeah. southwestern community as a whole but then yeah, yeah they killed to eglinton and yeah. just like and looking at who am i contributing to and in terms of the community all in all it's like we talk about the black community in itself like i feel like i i'll i see myself as a part of the black community obviously so like whatever work i'm doing mm -hmm. i'm keeping in mind to um what's the word i'm keeping in mind that it's 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 in the what i say it's in, in the interest of the black community 100 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah to make sure our interests are at the forefront of everything mm -hmm. and to make sure that you know i'm yeah, I'm basically I make sure whatever I do, I keep that part right at the top of my head to make sure that the black community, I'm focused, I have part of my focus is on that as well. Yeah. Because, you know, keen on not losing sight of your roots yeah. and just your history. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, that's, those are all my, uh, like, content questions. Um, are there other things that I haven't asked about that you would like to talk about? Um, hmm. uh, give me one second. To mm -hmm. It's like... Hmm. I feel like all in all, and maybe these might be, be final comments, but like all in all, looking at public participation, looking at like, just like we have to recognize that people do not have the opportunity, same opportunity to partake in uh, things, I would, I'll just say things of the public or like just to partake in societal things. Like we talked about my, mothers, the most single black mothers, uh, or just mothers in general, or just, just single individuals have to work multiple jobs, basically, mm -hmm. to uh, make ends meet, to pay their bill. Mm -hmm. you know, I know I've spoken to so many individuals in I write in who whose children have to, you know, get a job early, or, like, who have to, like, you know, just, I have to, like, go, basically push hard just to ensure that there's a roof over their heads. So it's like, I feel like it's important that when just thinking about people in society, democracy, like uh, how, uh, just like just thinking of like society as a whole and democracy and citizenship, it's all just for nothing if we, if, 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 if like inequality is continuing to be on the rise or, yeah. and if like, if, if, if we aren't striving to make it better. Yeah. That's not if inequality is continuing to be on the rise, mm -hmm. the citizenship, public participation, let's throw all, all that away. If uh, uh, things like continuing to be the same and like, yeah, it's, uh, we need to be, it's just kind of useless. Uh, yeah, it's like, uh, I can use the word, uh, well, little kid would say, oh, it's not fair, <laughs> but it, 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 it's, it's, I guess it's like even beyond being not fair, it's just a matter of, you know, we can't, you know, on the path of, oh, we're well, many for everyone, I'm many for the everyone, da, 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 da. our politicians can't keep on with the, uh, uh, we represent the whole community, you know, mm -hmm. media can't be like, oh, uh, oh we got all the, like, no, it's just like everyone, what, what you tend to see is everyone loves to say, oh, we're in, they say we're in it together, we're in it together, you know, can this go with this coronavirus, we're in it mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. but it is. If we're truly in it together, you know, like it's it, 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 the truth is we're not in it really in it together because people's experiences are totally different. Yeah. Obviously, in society, people's experiences are going to be different. 
but we'll talk about drastically different mm-hmm. and that's where the problem lies that yeah. people are literally suffering like trying to like eat every day like mm-hmm. this it, mm-hmm. sorry give me one second i don't want my sister's phone okay hello sister Sorry, Professor, give me one moment. That's okay. Thank you. All right, sorry, thank you. That's okay. But, yeah, like, all in all, I feel like we got to draw all of these democracy, public participation, all of well, you know, it's all of us and none of us. Mm-hmm. It is true. We do need solidarity. We do need uh, to be in it together. Mm-hmm. But, like, if that's not what's being exemplified by institutions, mm-hmm. and if you aren't able to analyze and reflect and realize that, okay, these institutions are failing us mm-hmm. and failing certain people, mm-hmm. then I guess it's just it's always, mm, I guess that's another reason why I haven't even put too much of my focus on this democracy of citizenship like what it truly means because it's like it's just it doesn't reflect my interest mm-hmm. and that's uh, another thing to mm-hmm. end the comments mm-hmm. yeah that's great that's I mean that's basically the the theme of the book I'm expecting to write out of this is um um well, you know, we'll see. It. It's also obviously it's shaped by what people have to say, but the uh, that we can't claim to be democratic with the huge levels of inequality um, that we're facing. And uh, yeah, yeah. Well, this is this is super helpful. I mean, my last kind of content question, if you're interested, is uh, or are there other things you think I should be asking in this project? Other questions? I mean, you know, most of the questions, I mean, the questions you have asked are in uh, regards to like, people's, uh, where they stand in society and how they are, uh, like, I guess uh, what comes to mind is agency. I remember we learned mm-hmm. this in childhood, kids, like, got to, like, keep in mind our agency and when we're dealing with young people, da 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 so, mm-hmm. I just feel like, actually, I feel like you, you actually effectively, like, done that you got a good image of like my lifestyle mm-hmm. my family life mm-hmm. my education mm-hmm. so, yeah honestly i think you're, you're right at the ball to be honest That's right. just excellent good. okay good 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 i'm glad yeah. um okay uh so that's it um the other stuff was we already talked about about follow-ups um and yeah thank you so much that was super interesting i have pages and pages of notes and uh, I've made a note to share the transcript with you. Um, I'll uh, I'll share that note with Shihan, who's uh, the one who was in touch with you, so he can yeah. help me remember also. But, but that's uh, should be not too hard to remember. If you know if you don't hear from me about that in a month, feel free to follow up. But I'm pretty sure okay. I can remember to do that. Um, it's just sort of buried in my notes, so you know things can things can disappear. But um, yeah, that was that was super super interesting. Thank you so much. No um, Thank you very much. I appreciate the time. I'm looking forward to seeing you know, the results of uh, the research and the book and, and everything. Yeah, yeah. And if you're interested, you know, because I've been writing on this stuff for a while. Um, one article of mine I was thinking of as you were talking, you might find interesting. Um, and it's focused on the research I did in Canada already with homeless young people. Um, and it's it's theorizing democracy in ways that might resonate with you. And and it's similar to how I expect to frame the book. So if you're interested, I can I can send you that. Some light reading. Yeah. yeah, cool. yeah, I, yeah sure. I love reading those articles. So I'm, I'm constantly reading. Okay. And I guess that's another way. Um, another uh, part of where I get kind of like my knowledge and like information is like I'll read all of these like even if it's a conservative article or a more liberal or that I'll just read everything. Yeah. To, to yeah. My mind. Yeah. Cool. That's great.
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'll send that along. Awesome. Thank you, Stephen. No um, enjoy the rest of your evening. It's just uh, almost six o'clock, and uh, it's nice to talk to someone in the same time zone. Oh, some of my <laughs> most of my interviews have been. You got to figure out. Like the Australia and New Zealand ones are really interesting because it's my night before and their next morning. It's it's like the oh, wow. the only way to line it up without one of us being in the middle of the night. So um, yeah. Good to talk to a uh, fellow Canadian in the same time zone. Yeah. Sure we'll talk again. Yep. Thank you very much. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Take care. Bye.